Now we're gonna add another case to our updating method, redraw tapped. We'll say case three, we'll call draw rotated squares. Again, not written yet, so Xcode will complain for a minute. This method is gonna demonstrate how we can apply transforms to our context before drawing and how you can stroke a path without filling it. To make this happen, you're gonna learn three new things. How to translate the current transformation matrix, how to rotate the current transformation matrix, and how to stroke just the path with our line width rather than filling it in. Now this current transformation matrix thing is very similar to those CG affine transform modifications we used in Project 15, except its application is a little bit different in core graphics. In UIKit, you rotate around the center of your view as if a pin was stuck right through the middle. In core graphics, you rotate around the top left corner so, to avoid that, we're first going to move the transformation matrix halfway into our image first, so we've effectively moved the rotation point. This also means we need to draw our squares so they're centered on our center. For example, setting their top and left coordinates to be minus 128, and their width and height to be 256. So let's write the method now. I'll scroll down, find some space below, draw checkerboard. Again, we'll take bits of this thing, we'll, we'll take a the method itself and delete the drawing code inside our closure. So keep the image renderer, keep render our image, delete the inside of this closure, then keep the call to image with image equals image. Of course, this method to be renamed, we'll call this thing draw rotated squares rather than draw checkerboard. Like I said, inside our closure, the first thing we're going to do is move 256 by 256 into our canvas. So we rotate around the center rather than the top left corner. So we'll say ctx.cgcontext.translate by 256 by 256. That's exactly half the 512 by 512 we have up here. Next, we'll define how much we want to rotate and how many times. For here, I'm going to say let rotations equals 16. So we'll make 16 rotations. And each one of those things we're going to say is going to be pi divided by the rotations. And for each rotation, we'll rotate by pi divided by the number of rotations we have. So we'll say let amount equals double dot pi divided by double version of our rotations, like that. So overall, we'll rotate by 180 degrees, but it'll be 1 16th of that for every rotation we go around. Now we'll loop from zero up to rotations by saying four underscore in zero up to rotations. ctx.cgcontext.rotate by the CG float version of our amount. So take this value here, convert to CG float, and rotate by that amount there. Then we're going to add a rect at that position. So we'll say ctx.context.addRect a CG rect with the X of minus 128, the Y of minus 128, the width of 256, and the height of 256. Now again, remember, we have to go back and left by 128 because we're now drawing from the center of our canvas. That's this translate by 256 by 256 thing here. That moves to the center of our canvas and so if we try and draw from there, we'll draw from the center. So we want to draw back and left by 128, and width and height 256. So we centered around this point uh, here, 256 by 256. Of course, just adding the rect again and again and again doesn't actually draw anything. We want to draw into that some sort of thing. So we'll say uh, ctx.cgcontext.setStrokeColor. This can be whatever color you want. I'll just use uicolor.black.cgColor. And we're not gonna set the line width this time because by default, line width is one and that's perfectly fine here. So I'll just say after that, ctx.cgcontext.strokePath. And that will draw all 16 rectangles at the same time in one pass. I'll press Command R. Let's see how this thing looks. There's a rectangle. There's our circle, there's our checkerboard, 
and boom, there's our rotated squares. Now you can see we have these beautiful rotated squares going here with no extra calculations required. I mean, just stop for a moment and consider the mathematics it would take to calculate the four corners of each of these rectangles if you want to do it by hand. If sine and cosine are distant memories for you, be glad you have the current transformation matrix. Now one thing I should make clear, and which hopefully you've seen by now, is that modifying the current transformation matrix, or CTM, is cumulative. But what makes this code all work? You see, when we rotate here by 1 16th of pi, i.e. this amount here, that transformation is applied on top of whatever was there already, rather than to a clean slate. So it rotates a small amount, adds a rectangle, rotates some more by a small amount, adds another rectangle, and then some more, and then some more, and some more, and some more, and some more. The last shape drawing I want to show you is how to draw lines. And you're going to need two new methods, move to and add line to. These are the core graphics equivalents to the UI Bezier pass we made in our fireworks night project. So I'll add another case. Uh, here we have redraw tapped. I'll say there is now case four. This will call draw lines. Again, I'll copy and paste an example. I'll just take uh, draw rotated squares, take all that down here and rename that thing to be draw lines. Leave the render intact, leave the image intact, delete the body of the closure and keep image unit image at the end intact. I'm going to make this method translate and rotate the CTM again, although this time the rotation will always be 90 degrees. This is going to draw boxes inside boxes, always getting smaller, like a square spiral. It's going to do this by adding a line to more or less the same point inside a loop again and again. But each time the loop rotates the CTM, the actual point the line ends has moved to. It will also slowly decrease the line length, causing the space between boxes to shrink like a spiral. So, first we'll go ahead and say uh, ctx.cgcontext.translate by 256 by 256. So again, we're drawing from the center of our canvas. Then we'll say, this is the first line we're drawing. We'll write var first is true. And then we'll have our line length as a variable by saying var length is a CG float equal to 256, like that. And now we'll start a loop. We'll underscore in zero up to excluding 256. So we'll do some work here 256 times. That's lots of lines we'll be drawing. Each time the loop goes around, the first thing we'll do is rotate the CTM by half of pi, which is 90 degrees if you remember. I'll say ctx.cgcontext.rotate by dot pi divided by 2. So 90 degrees. And if this is the first line we're drawing, we'll use move to to move to our starting position and then set first to be false. We'll say if first, then ctx dot cg context dot move to a cg point well our x will be our line length and our y will be 50 and disable first so it's false now else for the next 255 lines we'll say ctx dot cg context dot add line and use 2 a cg point with x being length y being 50 so more or less the same thing this first one starts the position, it moves to the first position, or subsequent ones add lines from there to somewhere else. And after that's done, we'll decrease the line length. We'll say length star equals 0.99. So come down by a smaller each time. Outside the loop, we'll say ctx.cgcontext.set stroke color. And I'll use UI color.black again, but by all means, you can do choose something else. And then ctx.cgcontext.strokePath. So draw all the lines in one shot. I press Command R now, and let's see how this thing looks. There's our rectangle, our circle, our checkerboard, our squares, and now our lines. So the end result that you can see it looks like one of the handcrafted effects from the Twilight Zone but it shows a little of the power that transforms and lines can bring to your drawing.